Ciao ragazze, ciao ragazzi. It's time for some Italian again, even though I don't really speak it, but I think it's enough for now. It is justified because a Ducati Street Fighter V4S in South Tyrol, which is also part of Italy, and the Diva, which isn't as much of a Diva anymore on these beautiful roads that sometimes aren't so beautiful. McGregor and I tested the Ducati here. Stay tuned, great motorcycle, great video. I've known the Ducati Street Fighter V4S for a while as a bike that drives me crazy because it's so intense at the bottom. It used to jerk a lot. I'll take that back because it jerked a lot in the first version where I just said 208 HP. Wow, that's awesome. But what good is that if I can only really unleash it on the racetrack because I can only ride it smoothly at low speeds. And this one, the 2023 model, doesn't do that anymore. Although Gregor doesn't completely agree with me, but um, I'm pretty impressed with it. And I'll briefly touch on the technical aspects now because uh, then you'll see some onboard footage. I thought these 200 plus HP naked bikes thrive on their sporty performance. The specs might impress at the bar, but in reality, it's about the emotions in the saddle. Core sportivo. So I thought the best way to convey that is live which is why we put the microphone in the helmet during our GoPro rides. Um, I was skeptical at first saying, do we really need to do this? And you said yes, especially with these bikes, and it turned out to be great. But first, some info, 208 HP at 13,000 RPM, a bit late, 123 Newton meters at 9,500 RPM from a V4 engine with 1,158 cc. One might think it all comes a bit late, and it used to, but with the Street Fighter V4S compliant, with Euro 5 standards, it's really great now. Ducati Street Fighter V4S 2023er Modell, das tatsächlich in vielen Belangen besser wurde. Aber ich bin ja heute schon ein bisschen länger unterwegs mit ihr und so beim ersten Losfahren sind mir zwei Dinge besonders aufgefallen. Sie ist jetzt schon nicht unruppig, falls man das so sagen kann. Alles klar und mit einem Spiegel da, das sieht man, ob was kommt, das ist praktisch. Sie ist laut, sie ist richtig laut. So, aber jetzt, wo ich da ein bisschen sportlicher einmal das Potenzial ansatzweise auskoste, weil auch wenn ich da jetzt es hier ansatzweise gebe, die kann ja viel mehr. Da stört mich der Sound auch schon nicht mehr. Das sind wirklich so infernale Sprünt und Schreit. Das taugt man halt irgendwie schon. Passt. 
So McGregor, you've heard my impressions now. What do you think? Yeah, so to sum it up, um, you were a bit surprised at how well it works, especially compared to the previous Street Fighter V4. I must admit, I've never ridden that one. This Street Fighter V4 is the first one I've ever ridden, moved, and of course, I know the stories from the previous models when you came into the office and complained. Because you said earlier, I have a different opinion about the engine. I think we actually agree. I totally concur with you that it's really good to ride even at lower RPMs, even in hairpin turns. Yes, you might need to ride a bit more cautiously, but it works in first gear, of course. But then it pushes, it has character, it vibrates and so on. But as you so nicely described the sound earlier, that's actually not really really present anymore. The noise level is always there, as you mentioned, but after that it's gentle enough from the bottom end, in my opinion, for daily use, and it delivers the power in a way that you can navigate tight hairpin turns. And then, of course, it explodes, there's the fireworks, but when it comes to the real fireworks in the last third of the RPM range, we were far from that on these roads here. We also have an online test where former MotoGP rider Martin Bauer rode this machine as it can be ridden, really pushing the limits. That doesn't happen in this video, but it's still interesting. We still had fun, and it's intense for me. Despite the engine running better, it's still a radical machine. The data sheet already says so, and it feels that way, it's loud, and there are still a lot of vibrations reaching the rider. I'm almost surprised that you see so many of them, because this Street Fighter, not just the V2, but also the V4, seems to be quite popular in the naked, bike, hyper-naked segment. You often see one on country roads or maybe on a pass like here. We're basically at the foot of the Stelvio and you occasionally see such a machine. It means people use them not just in their primary use case like racetracks or certain roads with no police and perfect asphalt and long curves, but there are also people who tour and ride alpine roads with them. We wanted to check how well that works and to the point, it works quite well. However, I do have a few issues, which are less about the engine running. The first one is related to hairpins and seems to be more about the electronic throttle response, which you can configure. But in the standard road mode, I feel there's a slight delay. It's not about the throttle play, where the grip moves loosely, which you can adjust with a spring. The throttle has resistance, but the engine only responds after a few degrees of turning. I noticed this because I tried to take the hairpins without using the clutch and I wanted to dose very finely, but sometimes I was a bit late due to this brief dead spot. This is really nitpicking, and as soon as you're going faster than these tight hairpins, say over 15 km per hour, it responds very cleanly to the throttle, which is a real joy. Since you can't fully use the power, I was just playing around, giving it a little throttle before braking just to feel that power momentarily, which then made me brake again. Exactly. So the braking is top notch too, thanks to the Brembo setup with 330 mm twin discs at the front, providing super bike level stopping power. This is crucial, especially if you get carried away with the bike's performance, you can reliably brake before the curve and the suspension allows you to carve cleanly through the radius. I just want to touch on the hairpins again, where you mentioned the slight delay in throttle response. Uh, I tried using the clutch to help with that, but as I said, once you get used to it, you know when to lay the Street Fighter V4S down and apply the right amount of throttle. The suspension is well-tuned and adjustable through the electronics. On the rough roads we tracked, it shook me up a bit but I thought for such a sporty bike, it still offers some comfort. I noticed that if I went slowly over rough roads, I felt it more, but at higher speeds, it smoothed out the bumps better. That's something you notice with high quality suspensions. They work better when pushed harder. Can I quickly interject? But another point is that on bumpy roads, the suspension works better the faster you go. However, when going slower over bumps, you notice the ergonomics, especially the seat, which is more track focused, pushing you forward a bit, so I had to keep shifting back. This means that on an Alpine pass, for example, the ergonomics might push you forward, but otherwise they are very good for a hanging style with the knee nicely hooked onto the tank. It feels natural on this bike. Uh, I agree. Uh, the seating position is more radical than other naked bikes because it's a hyper naked, but it's still better than some others where you slide forward drastically. Uh, it could hurt over time, but this one is fine. The handlebar height is also good. Speaking of which, I should mention the brakes. They're now so good, so sensitive, and not as brutal as they used to be. People used to say that on such a bike, you'd do a headstand if you braked hard. No, you don't. 
but they still bite incredibly well. You can cruise through the city without flipping over, but it's still too loud for city riding. It's crazy how it roars, and it feels like there's a speaker blasting into your helmet. But that's part of the Ducati charm. A bit over the top, a bit rougher, more vibrations, and also a bit pricier. In Austria, it's still more expensive than in Germany and Switzerland, thanks to the Novatex. 33,000 euros is a lot of money, right? Yes, a lot of money. We've provided the prices for both the German and Swiss markets in the video description below. Now let's talk about noise. According to some purists, I might not be a true Ducatisti because I have a significant criticism of the Street Fighter V4S. It's excessively loud. Don't get me wrong, the sound is incredible, especially when you're pushing the bike hard. However, in certain environments, particularly in the Alpine regions, the sound can become overwhelming. The way it reverberates off the rock walls in the Alps amplifies the noise to an almost unbearable level. After navigating through some of the tighter, twisty roads, I noticed a persistent ringing in my ears, which is a testament to just how intense the noise can be. Okay, Gregor, enough of that. We Ducati fans absolutely love that roaring sound, even if it's loud enough to blow our ears out. The thunderous rumble is part of the thrill and character of riding a Ducati, and it's something we wouldn't trade for anything. But to get approval, it's recorded at 107 decibels at a standstill. We know standstill noise doesn't tell the whole story, but it points in the right direction. To meet regulations, it's tuned to be quiet at around 50 km per hour in fourth gear, but as soon as you go a bit slower or faster, it's loud again. It's a bit surprising at first, you can ride quietly through the town, but only if you maintain between 50 and 55 km per hour, because in the 30 km per hour zones, it gets really loud again. Yeah, you wouldn't ride it there, that's right. Um, maybe it fits through the 30 km per hour zone, but you still stick to 50 km per hour. Anyway, a bit about the electronics, which are comprehensive. It has everything you can get on a naked bike. So lean sensitive traction control, wheelie control, launch control, riding modes, cornering, ABS, it's all there. It doesn't have comfort features like radar cruise control because it's not a touring bike, but it has what you'd expect like a TFT display and LED headlights and taillights. And one thing I want to mention, which isn't electronic, but Gregor, do you want to talk about the winglets, which I don't think look so bad anymore? I rarely like winglets, I have to admit, but you know when they work. We couldn't fully test them, but at 270 km per hour, they provide about 30 kg of downforce, if I remember correctly. In general, these winglets probably work to generate some downforce, but we didn't reach those speeds during our rides here. And speaking of comfort features, it does have heated grips. I wouldn't want to ride with these tires in cold temperatures because they're Hypersport Pirelli Corsa 4. I can't see the number, but they're very sporty and need some heat to work well. So in cold temperatures, you need to be cautious, but at least you have heated grips for some comfort. Bravo. So as I see it and you less so, it's a super versatile bike that blasts your ears a bit. But as a Ducati fan, you live with it and want to live with it. I think we've... Yes, my second major criticism, which seems to be a thing for Ducati fans, is that you probably never want to turn around because the turning radius is very limited. We also have the BMW M1000R as another hyper-naked comparison. There are significant differences, but... Right, so should I go ahead and wrap this up now or did you want to add something? It's all good. Right, let me wrap up. We're also doing comparisons and individual videos on the BMW M1 was an R and lots more here at Alpen Masters, testing how these bikes handle tight corners. We were positively surprised by the Ducati. Watch our video on the BMW and the comparison video. To see all our videos, subscribe to our 1000 PS YouTube channel, give a thumbs up to the Ducati and maybe to us too if you want. Leave comments on what you think of the bike, if you own it, how your daily experience is with it and if it matches our experience today. Thanks for listening and watching. Yes, we're saying goodbye. I say goodbye with... Ciao! <laughs> Arrivederci. Sehr schön.